Welcome to our Build a Barn series. Make sure you check out the other videos where we knock down the barn from 1881, cut down some trees, and then mill their own lumber. In part three, we begin the actual construction of the barn, including the making of our own trusses. Okay, put a little load in there. Good job. All right, so we got 16 holes punched. Actually, uh, maybe 18 holes. Anyways, we got all of our holes punched. We only had one casualty. Um, this is what happens to your PEX pipe when you're pretty sure that it's routed in a different spot. So, easily repairable. It happens. So, all the holes are punched. Uh, we're gonna tamp them down, flatten out the bottom. So we just pulled all the strings. Uh, we got all of our outside corners. Uh, everything measures out good. Diagonals are good. So as long as we follow our ropes, it'll be a nice square building. Fortunately, I've had to do this before. Um, the most important thing with this kind of piping is that you keep it from getting the insulation saturated. So what I'm actually going to do is cut out a piece about this big and then I have some uh, end caps that will go on and seal off the insulation and then we'll splice the center piece and then just re-insulate that with some spray foam.
All right, that's all we can do for tonight. Uh, unfortunately, I'm out of parts. Tomorrow I'll pick up two more of these stainless hose clamps and then two large ones to go over the tops. Uh, and I gotta get a coupling for this line because I nicked that one too. Uh, and then I also have to retie in my Cat 5 for my internet. But that's it for tonight. Kaden, uh. what is Daddy gonna do? Cookies? Cookies. Are you gonna help with the cookies? <laughs> Cookies. Yesterday we got all the poles set except for the gables. Uh, those are on order. They'll be here tomorrow. After we put the poles in, uh, Nat and I packed around them and watered them last night so that we can get them to set in a little bit faster. I'll water them again uh, this evening. But um, that'll lock them in nice and tight. And then last night I went around and set up a laser. And I shot a line on every pole and then used the speed square to mark it all the way around. Uh, we'll use that as a general measuring point to determine uh, where the boards go. And then I pulled my four foot mark. Um, I shot where the concrete goes. I uh, pulled the four foot mark, uh, which will be the top of the wainscot. And then this mark right here will be the top of the, the girt board. Um, that the wainscot and the, I believe they call it Z channel yeah, will hook yeah. to. So then we'll start running purlings up and down, or I guess girts from there. Um, 
<clears throat> and then my header, Mommy. I'm sorry, my wrap board will go Mommy. at the bottom. I still have to mark the, this side of that. Uh, so today I'll be girt boards and headers. Okay, so these are a bunch of eights. Uh, just two by four by eights, but I milled them as modern dimensional lumber to make it easier if we have to use any dimensional lumber. So two by four by eights, uh, two by ten by eights, and there's a whole pile of two by four by sixteens. Uh, it's all uh, eastern cottonwood. We'll sort through it as we go. Um, Moisture is not too bad, I and mean, it's down to about thirty percent now, so uh, it should hold up fine. So what you can do, if you run 24 inches on center, is you cut these 20 and a half, and you just leave the nail partially sticking through. Then what you can do is stick it in like this. And as long as you hold your board tight to that, you're 24 inches on center. business
like the barnyard. Save us some money on the construction of this barn. We had to buy the top ports for three of them, but we were able to mill uh, the top ports for the remaining ten. All the webbing uh, is, was that we milled, but the bottom uh, we had to purchase as well. So you may have noticed in the video of us hanging the uh, trusses that we're using these bars. Uh, this is something a buddy of mine and I made up. All we did is set it up so that when you lock these on, your trusses are four foot on center. So we made 12 of them. Um, we can set probably about three trusses at a time, but it makes it really fast. That way the guy that's flying them up can fly one up. You lock these bars on. And then we'll bring the crane or excavator, whatever we're using, over, grab the next truss, and you can fly that up and you can keep everybody moving. Okay, so I've got a lot done since the last video uh, where we hung the trusses. I'm getting ready for concrete. We got concrete coming in uh, four days now. Oh, so we got concrete coming Friday. So what I did is I cross drilled uh, the existing slab and installed half inch rebar every two feet. That way the new pour uh, will have something to hold on to and it won't shift and be uneven. Uh, so today I'm going to put the skirt board or the rat board up all the way around the outside and then I'll put the expansion joint on the rat board and around all the poles but this is what it's looking like right now so as you can see the rebar is every two feet 
and then I started getting the rat board ready last night uh, but decided I would be courteous and not shoot the nail gun off at 10 o'clock at, at night some of the people around here probably want to sleep I gotta build forms for the approaches uh, these holes are all drilled in here but I figured I'd leave the rebar out until I've got the grade uh, set exactly where I want it so I'm not tripping over rebar so uh, and then I also moved the electrical um, it used to come up through here so I dug a sh uh, shallow trench put it in conduit and ran it up through here where I will locate the new box and then the only last thing I did was this edge of the concrete uh, was flared up slightly because it butted up to the old barn um, so I took my uh, 7 inch angle grinder with a cupped diamond uh, diamond blade on it and shaved all that, that lip down uh, so that we don't have a, a lip butting up to the new pour. So that's where we're at. Alright so we're going to pour concrete today. Uh, I've been working on the forms all week and getting the final grade set. So you, got, you can see I got rebar in all around the all the way around the whole slab to keep them locked together. Uh, I still have to finish setting this, but I still got a, about an hour and a half or so before the truck gets here. So we'll put the the guide in, then I'll slide the screed on. Um, I gotta blow some of these leaves out of here, and then I've got the approach, all the approaches uh, formed up. Those are all good to go. Um, the door is in. The door frame, when I do the door frames, I imagine everybody does them the same, but I box them and then uh, expand the joint on the outside. That way when your door, uh, you don't get any concrete under your sill. So if this pad shifts, uh, you won't have a door that's inoperable during the winter. Um, but yeah, that's how we're looking. So we got 10 and a half yards coming today. Uh, I imagine it'll probably take about three, four hours to get it all done. Just in time for winter.
you tap the edges on the forms so that when you pull the forms off, you're not left with a bunch of jagged rocks. It'll actually smooth the edges out so it'll be more of a finished look. Okay, all the purlings are up now. Um, we spaced them all 24 inches on the center. Yeah, we'll go in 61. All right, that wraps up part three in our Build a Barn series. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to see all the different phases of this project yet to come. Here's a sneak peek of what is to come, a more detailed video of the construction of the trusses and the making of the sliding barn doors. Thank you for watching and we hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to see more action in our household.